What's up you guys, it's Peter here and today I want to cover an important question and that question is do you need a formal education to become an effects artist? Now that answer is multifaceted but in essence to me the answer is no, you do not. And the reason for that is because there are many different ways to get into the industry and people come from different backgrounds but ultimately what they share is a passion for effects and also the discipline to work hard at that you know career so today i want to cover a few things and a few resources as to where you can kind of start uh, with learning houdini and how if you're already having another career or if you want to get into the industry how you can improve your skills step by step without getting frustrated because Houdini is a big application there's a lot to learn and I think it's easy to get lost in the in the beginning now there are a lot of resources out so many more resources out you know today than there were 10 or 20 years ago uh, so it's a great time to start learning Houdini now I do say this with a little caveat in the sense that going to a formal education, going to university or going through, through some you know, proper school uh, will help you still. It, it's, uh, sometimes it's, it's more of an accelerator than anything else. So, and having uh, feedback and guidance from a dedicated uh, um, course leader or a professor can definitely help you and, and improve your skills. So there is definitely value in terms of doing formal education. But if you're already working and you want to do this maybe part time or you, you know, you, you're thinking, oh, well, maybe uh, I, I don't uh, have the money to afford to go into any of these uh, private, more expensive schools, uh, then maybe it's a good idea to sort of follow the guide that I'm about to show you and how to start learning. So first of all, where to start? Well, the first place to start should be when you download Houdini. Let me just uh, shrink this down. When you download Houdini, right, and you have uh, the Apprentice Edition um, or, or an indie version as well, if you want, the first thing to sort of note as soon as you sort of you know, press tab anywhere, really, um, if you press tab, you have all of these different operators. It can be very overwhelming in the beginning to start, you know, like looking at all of this and go like, oh, my God, there's so much in here. But actually, there's a lot of things that you can ignore when you just start. So the very first thing you might want to do is drop down a geometry node. So something like this, a geo node, right? And then dive inside. And so now you're in a different context. So instead of at the top level concept, at the top level object concept, context, you are in the sub level concept, surface operators. And if we press tab again over here, you're going to see, oh my God, there's even more than there were before. So you know, this is maybe even more overwhelming. But actually, again, there's a lot of things that you can ignore. Initially, you don't need to know all of these to become good at effects or to become good as, as a Houdini artist. I say effects artist, but really this goes for any Houdini artist. So let's start simple. I have over here on this Geo 1, I've already dropped down an object and I've got inside of it a few nodes. I have a Fonsop, a Labs Thicken node, a Remesher and a Delta Mush. Now, what do each of these nodes do and how do you even start, right? So if we were to recreate this for just a moment and I start typing font, there's my font sub. And so, okay, it's got a bunch of options and parameters and all of that kind of thing. If we look at it, right, here's my letters, right? So we can kind of see all the letters. But what I really am wanting to do is go after the help, after the information. So if you press over here, this little, um, you know, help button, you're going to get some information, some help. So if we are same thing, if you right click and say help, then a little menu will pop up, this kind of uh, Houdini menu, and it will give you information about that node. So font geometry node. So this is a first area of where you can find information about it. And one of the great things about it is that, you know, like all of the um, settings are explained a little bit later. So you can basically all the parameters that we have, right? We have, for instance, here, the primitive type, type of geometry, then the font, you know, the actual text. So if we were to change the text, right, if we were to say, you know, type my name, Peter, then here we can see, okay, great, it hasn't done it, right? So next, what could we do with this? Maybe we can do a poly extrude, maybe we can do, uh, I have used a labs thicken because it, it helps to, you know, thicken nodes. But if we were to do a poly extrude, so we start typing poly, we want to do something with polygons. There's a lot of poly related nodes and there is poly extrude. Right, so if we do that, and we can extrude a little bit our letter. Now, there's a problem. Here at the, the backside isn't exported. So if we 
scroll down a little bit, we can see output back, right? And then it will be a nice closed object, closed geometry. So great, same thing. Let's press the help for the poly extrude. And so here we can see now the help for the poly extrude pops up. I like if uh, if this is interesting, you know, we can sh middle click on this, right? And it'll keep, um, uh, like this is for geometry node, it'll create a new tab, eventually it'll load over here your poly extrude. You can also grab this, uh, in this information over here, this uh, path, and copy that into a browser. So here I've done that, I've copied that into Chrome, and I can just say here, go to Poly Extrude. So now I have the help information for the font geometry, and I have also eventually, once it loads here, the help for the Poly Extrude, and so on. So you can kind of keep doing that, new tabs and so on, like maybe the Poly Bevel, you know, that might be interesting. and. Sometimes I like this a little bit better than the inbuilt browser that is in Houdini, just because sometimes this can be a little slow or it can be a little crashy, can be a little buggy. Um, and here you can eventually maybe make bookmarks of all the nodes that you're currently learning. Now, what else is, is cool about this? If we look at the font sub, then you can see examples, right? So if we click on examples, it'll take you down to the bottom and they're sort of bubbly font. What does that do? The font shop is used to create 3D text geometry in the scene, the geometry made, you know, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff, font basic. So if you load or launch one of these examples, uh, it will create new nodes into your scene and you can learn from them. Now, that's nice for those nodes, but you can actually go over here to help and go to example files. Right, so this is where you can you know, start here. You're going to get your uh, basic help file information. Um, Let's see, uh, if we load that for just a moment, it is going to take you to the Houdini website. So if you go to the Houdini website, so let's let's get into that for just a moment. So I went to help and said start here, and it'll basically load the Houdini website, but it'll take you directly to the help uh, data. So let me just uh, bring that up for a moment. So here. All right, so currently on the homepage, we have a few things. The Huli challenge is going on. This is an awesome challenge that's going on. But specifically, what should you be looking at? Because there's, you know, over here under learn, right? So if it takes you to getting started, it'll talk to you about, all right, getting started. And here's a basic tutorial. Now, I would recommend go after these basic tutorials. Go and, and start here, you know, Houdini introduction, intro, right? So you basically um, start with basic modeling new to Houdini, this is probably a good one to sort of get into it. Houdini in five minutes, um, you know, all really great tutorials to sort of get into it. Now, the key thing is don't get overwhelmed, right? Understand that learning Houdini is something that will take probably initially months and then years. And then, I mean, I've been doing it for over a decade. So to get really good at it, it is going to take quite a while. Now, the good news is that it's a fun journey, right? So start with procedural modeling, start with SOPs, right? So what is SOPs? We just mentioned it already. If you start over here, you drop down an object, you dive inside and here, this is SOPs. So if you create a sphere or a box or whatever, right? Start with very basic operations. And a good idea would be, now I have a sphere in my scene, can I light that sphere? Can I add a material to it? Uh, the first example that you saw on that website was basically a soccer ball, which is in essence a type of sphere. Uh, and it's a good example. You know, there's a background here. Uh, Robert Magia has done a great job in terms of uh, doing a little bit of lighting, a little bit of camera work, a little bit of texturing materials, basically a nice run through of everything that you want when you start with Houdini. So I think this is a great starting place. So next is the tutorials. So basically over here under learn is getting started. You have the learning paths, right? Are you a visual effects artist for features? Are you interested in more, um, you know, your game development, you know, it depends on what, what it is that you want. Are your character effects, uh, maybe more pipeline, you know, all these different kind of topics are useful uh, and, and, you know, go different routes. Now, I would say Houdini is generally known for doing effects, right? I mean, heavy fluid simulations, heavy destruction, all of that, like really uh, heavy fluid, fluid stuff. Uh, and that's really cool stuff. Don't get me wrong, it is, but it's also more complex stuff. So it can be that if you try to do that and as your first thing, and you're gonna get frustrated just because you're like, oh, I wanna break the dam of the Lord of the Rings situation. You know, like that, that scene, that simulation and it's rigid bodies and it's water simulations and it's all kinds of stuff and smoke and fire and blah, blah, blah. 
Great, right? Awesome stuff. But remember, that's done by Weta Digital or was done by them. Uh, and it was a you know, great scene. But you know, many artists worked on that. Um, there was R&D, you know, months of work. So if, you, if that's your first go-to thing that you think about, uh, maybe baby steps, right? Learn to walk before you can fly and jump over mountains. So you're going to need to learn to crawl in Houdini first. So what are good resources to getting started? So these learning paths are useful, but then the next step is go to tutorials, right? And so if we look over here at tutorials, there's lots of Houdini tutorials right now. So which one is for you? Well, if you're just getting started, go to all levels, right? And basically go to things like quick tips or beginner, right? Let's go to beginner and see low poly house, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, basic smoke or maybe basic particles, um, maybe other things, so, you know, modeling a procedural case fan. Notice there are 43 pages of tutorials here. There's so much. And some of it is a little bit older, some of it is more recent. But the point is, go through it and, and just start by copying and duplicating what is in the tutorial. Don't necessarily start by creating your own stuff or trying to achieve something. When you first get started, you just are copying what another person is doing and you're absorbing like a sponge. At, you know, it's kind of passively, I mean, actively you're doing the tutorial, but you're not actively making your own thing yet. And that is important because once you finish the tutorial, then you can go and revisit it and say, okay, what if instead of a house, I'm trying to make um, a barn, right? Similar to a house, but a little bit different. Can you do that? And so then you're going to start modifying what you've learned, but you have that guidance of the tutorial to at least get you to a finished result without getting frustrated along the way. And you're going to learn which nodes are combined. And, you know, for instance, over here, when I'm doing my font sub, immediately after that, we can do either a poly extrude or we can do something like a thicken node. And this is a labs tool. So basically a labs thicken. So this is a digital asset. We can dive inside and see how are they actually doing that. And inside of it, you'll see, oh, there is actually a poly extrude. So you can learn from other tools, right? And you can also then start experimenting with combining them. Now notice this topology for just a moment, right? If you uh, want to become a good Houdini artist, it means to gain a good understanding of computer graphics. And so one of the things that we see here is that these polygons, right? We have some small flat polygons, and then we have bigger polygons on this side, and then we have really fat, no, really large polygon here in the front. We can see that if we turn on the primitive numbers, right? You can see all of these little primitives here, and then one big polygon on the front, and one big polygon on the end. This kind of topology, even though initially it gives you, you know, okay results, isn't going to lend itself very well for further operations. So if we were to do a remesh operation, this is going to triangulate your geometry. And this might serve more your purposes eventually if you want to fracture this, if you want to do some uh, smoothing, some vellum simulations for cloth or any other kind of stuff, this will serve you well. So remeshing, again, when in doubt, just press the help file and have a look what does the remesh geometry node do. And you can read about it, you know, over here. And again, there are examples at the bottom, you know, squid remesh, you know, how to remesh this squid and, you know, go and launch it and you're going to, or load it, and you're going to sort of get uh, an example of what it is. Again, if you want to have more, here's all the example files. And this is for every, I mean, for a lot of nodes, not necessarily all the nodes, but a lot of them. And so what it is that you're, what is it that you're interested in? Is it SOP geometry node examples? I'd recommend go to the SOP portion first and look at examples. These are hip files, scene files that other people have put together that you can kind of go and take a look at. Later on, you can kind of look at top objects, uh, maybe uh, a FOP examples when you start building your own custom little tools um, and so on. So super useful. So let's click on the sub geometry nodes and let's see what's inside here. So there's a lot of examples in here, right? All of this kind of stuff, right? So, but that's fine. My recommendation in terms of learning Houdini, right? is press tab, right? And then uh, let's go back to all. And then let's start here at the beginning. And every day, your goal is to drop down a couple of these and go in the help file and learn about them. That is you know, a good way to sort of start learning. Now, there's a, immediately some that you might want to ignore, right? So if we say over here, agent, well, that's everything to do with crowds. Skip that. That's not what you want to do initially, unless if you're really interested in crowds. But initially, just start skip all of the agent stuff. Height fields, skip all of height fields. That's all to do with terrains. No need for that right now. Um, pose deforming here at the top. No need for that. That's character related stuff. 
RBDs, all related to rigid body simulations. No need for all that. Um, attribute stuff. That is actually important. That is a good place to start learning about at creating attributes, uh, you know, promoting attributes, uh, learning about attribute transferring, um, all kinds of useful things related to attributes because that's data management. Now we're going to revisit attributes in a moment. Uh, what else do we have in here? Let's have a look. The labs tools, right? Um, these are, I'd say, um, intermediate level tools, but they are great examples to learn from. Like how do you build your own little networks? These are almost like tools slash examples of how to make a tool, a starting point for building your own tools. But again, building your own tools, yeah, that's kind of uh, maybe more intermediate to advanced as well. So maybe for later. Boolean operations, how can you do Booleans and, and merge objects together? Cool. Lots of labs tools, test geometry, right? If you want to test on something more complicated than a sphere, right? The pig's head or, you know, the squab or maybe test geometry Tommy, these are useful things to test on. Let's keep going. Copying. Copying of geometry is very common and very important to learn how to do in Houdini. So copy to points, copy stamping, useful things to learn. So explore those. Um, let's see, let's keep going. More lab stuff. We have a whole bunch of VDB related nodes. VDB is volumes and volumetric representations of objects. The first thing that comes to mind maybe is smoke or explosions. But again, you might want to stay away from explosions and volumes and uh, at least from, from fog simulations and smoke simulations initially, just because again, it's a little bit more complicated. So for now, don't worry too much about it. Um, what about other stuff here? Geometry manipulations, edges, right? Edges are important, but not as important as maybe polygons, right? Faces, uh, anything to do with points is gonna be important as well. Uh, we have some extrusions, facet operation, oh, useful stuff there. Vellum, right? So vellum related stuff is anything to do with soft bodies, clothing, uh, again, something you might not initially wanna to touch. So it's kinda of like I'm trying to strip down the complexity of Houdini so that you actually just focus on the basics in SOP. And then later on, you can start to dig in deeper. All right, let's keep going. What else? Volume. These are Houdini's traditional volume. So VDB came along later. Um, and then now the volumes actually became uh, sparse volumes again. So uh, useful to sort of take a look at, but uh, you know, maybe learning initially how to turn a sphere into a volumetric representation of that sphere might be useful to learn about that. Guides and grooming. Everything to do with fur and hairs, you know, also useful stuff. But again, for later, that's character effects. Um, let's keep going. And here's our height fields again. And then poly. So here, poly, all of that poly stuff, there's useful stuff in there. If you want to do you know, poly filling, poly extruding, um, lofting objects, maybe there's poly reducing. Uh, so, you know, kind of remeshing of, of, in a way. Uh, poly wire, if you want to have a, a, a turn a curve into a polygon representation, basically give it some thickness. Um, other things, uh, Voronoi, Voronoi split, Voronoi fracture kind of stuff, you know, useful stuff. Uh, painting stuff, yeah, don't really tend to use painting that much uh, just because uh, it's somewhat non-procedural. Uh, there's other ways to make patterns and, and masking without necessarily doing it, but initially when you're just learning that you need painting might be fine. All right, so that actually strips out a lot of nodes already that you can just ignore for a bit. So next, let's go go to the next great set of resources here. So in these tutorials, again, once you kind of get a little bit better at it, beginner, intermediate, master class, um, and advanced, right? So these are the different sort of levels. Now notice as we go to the intermediate level, we went from 43 tutorials to 28 tutorials. So not as many anymore. We also can go to the, the well, the advanced level first here. Now we're down to two pages. So really not that many anymore. Uh, but you know, that's where you eventually get to. Uh, and then masterclass, right? So here we're down to three pages. These are specific sort of more about uh, new technologies that side effects has introduced, uh, you know, specific focus on, on, you know, whether it's clothing or rigid bodies, you know, really interesting stuff. But this is going to go way over your head when you just get started in Houdini. So forget about this even. Now, next thing that I want to cover is notice that we have over here tutorials. And then there's talks and webinars. And a lot of people just don't seem to get on that. So talks and webinars. This is from panels, from you know previous uh, maybe SIGGRAPH panels or uh, Houdini Hive panels, Houdini user group stuff. So really interesting stuff. But the thing is, this can get pretty advanced as well. So it's kind of like, it's a little bit, uh, these are you know submitted a lot by, by artists and by users. And as interesting as they are, uh, 
initially they might be a little bit over your head but again there's so much cool stuff in here and sometimes it's maybe it's good to look at a couple of nodes right and figure those out with the help files and try to do your own thing but at the same time these master classes are like okay what is actually possible that's kind of like okay this is the goal this is where you want to get to it's very inspirational can keep you motivated to see what other people are doing with it all right so next up once you've kind of sort of you know gone through some of this kind of stuff and there's so much stuff here right i mean what kind is the SIGGRAPH stuff is it for uh, games or is it for film is it motion graphics all kinds of different things so once you kind of you know gone through some tutorials and uh here we, let's get back to our, our beginner or even quick start you know like literally just you know things how to get started a very quick little tips things that don't, don't take too long um quick tips again same kind of things short little little sections useful next is Metastella's uh, website, right? So Metastella's website is CG Wiki. So if you type in who in, in Google uh, CG Wiki, you're going to come across his website. He's done a great job and Matt's a great guy. Uh, so here's a little promotion for him. Uh, he has also done some talks about how to start learning Houdini. And so if you first go here on his on his website, CG Wiki, it's going to say, okay, about CG Wiki, blah, 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 get into that. But the main thing you want to get to is Houdini and getting started. And so that is going to lead you into you know, lots of quick examples. So if we go to Houdini, lots of quick examples, you're going to see there's all of these different topics, right? And their links. So you can kind of go through it and see it starts, you know, attribute transfer and position. You know, this is useful, an influence object, then attribute transfer and color, then point sub, then blah, 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 point VOP, right? So here we can get into VOPs. I would say anything VOP related, skip it initially. It's too advanced, skip VOPs for now. Don't have to know about that yet. Now see wrangles and how to do certain things using points to move edges. So these are kind of nice little examples here. Point that we transfer via a solver sub. And he's also including hip files. So some of it might be a little bit older from older versions of Houdini, but it doesn't matter. A lot of the concepts still stand and are super useful. So I'd highly recommend go and have a look into some of these hip files. Again, they're kind of like example files that he's built for you. It's kind of like extending Houdini with a lot of Matt's example files. And as I kind of scroll down, right, there's so much stuff here, you know, like fun stuff, fun, you know, fun stuff to sort of learn and look at. How does it all work? You know, how I can copy objects onto other objects, make them stick, instancing, you know, all that kind of stuff, influencing different colors, different rotations. Uh, a lot of it is going to talk about attributes and things like that. So definitely a great, great resource. You know, and then later on in terms of packet primitives, you know, what is that? You know, all kinds of useful things. There's a little bit of code as well and how to write certain things, but don't be scared about code. It's more expression. It's more small scale stuff. It's you know, later on, there's entire sections on here as well. And I mean, I'm just gonna kind of scroll down, page down a little bit on this, and like so many fun little examples uh, that you can kind of sort of see on this website that he's built. Now, some are definitely not so much basic, some are more intermediate examples, uh, but yeah, so much little examples in here that, that, you know, this one is a particularly fun one. I'm sure Matt knows where that came from. Um, it came from me, but yeah, anyway, it's, uh, it's a fun example. So. All right, fun stuff. Let's kind of uh, go through it. And so there's so much here to explore. So, and that's just subs, mainly subs. If you go then to the DOPS side of things later when you kind of want to get into dynamics, DOPS, dynamics, and sims, another, you know, like bunch of these examples. So this, this website is just gold, you know, it's like, it's just, you know, great stuff. And you know, like all of this kind of growing kind of things or here with the, you know, having points sitting on top of an object. Um, there's hairs and growing hairs, pop infected by volume, right? Particles that are infected by volumes, curves infected by volumes. So, you know, really fun stuff. Uh, then wire solvers, all kinds of fun stuff, right? So, and then eventually it's gonna get into RBDs as well, or some pyro stuff, some smoky kind of things as well. Color fields, uh, so much good stuff. So this really is a great website. And with so many of these come with hip files. So should definitely, definitely take a look at this. Hmm. So another one that is kind of fun to look at. <laughs> it's fun. Anyway, so, um, 2D solvers, 3D solvers, tornado kind of things, breaking with RBDs, how do rigid body dynamics work? Uh, there's great master classes on this stuff, emitting RBDs, but again, such a great resource. So you can spend, I'd say, days and weeks on this website just to sort of you know learn uh, different things. Now, generally the way that I do it is I, I try to you know, learn something, implement it, use it for whatever I need to. 
Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes he's run into little quirky scenarios that I've also run into. And so really, really great things to learn. All right, next up, once you've kind of learned this, the next step is the more intermediate to advanced side. I would say actually there's definitely intermediate to advanced side things. And one thing that I do want to cover, if you do are inclined eventually to learn a little bit more on VEX, right? Then you can go to VEX and he's got an entire section over here on, on uh, you know, new to VEX, the joy of VEX. So maybe let's click that, you know, because that's the first section. And this goes over all kinds of uh, basics, right? And so, you know, how learning about attributes and data types and programming things and doing different patterns and, you know, all kinds of little things that you can do with VEX. Because if you come from a coding background or even a little bit of mathematics or you understand a little computer um, science kind of thing, then this will be, you know, right up your alley. It's kind of like, you know, how can you do the things that you may already know to some extent in Houdini, or if you don't know how to do any programming, it's a great introduc introduction. So definitely lots of fun there with VEX. So next, once you get comfortable with Houdini and you want to go to more intermediate and advanced stuff, I'd recommend Entagma's tutorials. So Entagma, those guys, uh, they create great tutorials. And initially I would have said it's a lot of uh, motion graphics kind of stuff, but these days they do all kinds of stuff. It's, you know, a generalist kind of Houdini kind of thing. But the nice thing about it is that a lot of the times they take their effects and their tutorials all the way to final quality, to rendering and lighting and materials. Uh, they're really like, you know, they go after sort of, okay, this is a high quality product and a high quality tutorial. So it often goes beyond just the effect. It's also, let's finish this, let's make this look good. They could stop, but, but for instance, this Raspberry, procedurally modeling the Raspberry, right, but then they also do a section on uh, subsurface scattering. Now, they have a Patreon web page, some tutorials are free, some tutorials are uh, paid for, but either way, it's a great resource um, and there's so much great information here. So in Tagma, again, once you reach, I wouldn't say necessarily the beginner stage, but the intermediate level is a great kind of, uh, you know, area to take your skills to the next level. All right. Now, you don't, next, you don't want to be learning Houdini just by yourself. So I highly recommend the next step for you should be go on the forums. There is the Oddforce forum, so forums.oddforce.net, and they have sections on education, jobs, you know, whatever. And then general Houdini questions, effects, modeling, uh, you know, lighting, rendering, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, if you dive inside of the effects, let's see what we're going to get. There's, there's, I used to be quite active on the forums. Um, these days, I'm also active on uh, Discord. There's Discord Houdini chat channels. So, you know, definitely recommend that as well. But uh, yeah, all kinds of questions, right? Of people that have done certain things and they've got, you know, bullet pieces stuck in air. Uh, how do you solve that? And people will reply and, you know, let's, let's click this and just, uh, and, and highly recommend make yourself, uh, you know, a sort of um, a username and then basically uh, go and, and reply or go and participate because you're going to be able to start getting to know some of the people there and build, be part of the community. And it's a great way to ask questions, right? Now, the Oddforce forum is uh, sort of uh, outside of side effects control, kind of, sort of, but you also have over here the main side effects community forum, right? So here you can do the same thing. So the Houdini lounge, technical dis dis discussions, work in progress, Houdini learning materials, Houdini for real time. So, you know, if you're more of a game artist or if you're more of, uh, you know, you want to show off your work, I highly recommend you are active on LinkedIn and Vimeo as well, where you post your, your uh, work uh, and then you can link to it on the forum and basically start to get to know some people in the community. And so how should you be going about this, right? Because there's, again, there's a lot to learn initially and community is a big part of it. Uh, to copying a tutorial initially and then learning from that and sort of uh, do another tutorial, do another tutorial, like do one tutorial a day, try, try to cover a couple of nodes in Houdini, right? Go to the help file, go to over here, the examples, right? So those are kind of really great learning resources. Um, so, okay, and now let's talk briefly about formal education because we said, okay, you don't need necessarily formal education, but it is helpful and specifically because it can really uh, teach you the foundations. What do I mean by that? The foundations of mathematics, the foundations of physics, things that uh, aren't necessarily Houdini, but they will help you so much to become a better Houdini artist. Same with 
some people that have that have taught in the past uh, I, I i've taught to you so many times uh, they come from different backgrounds they come from maybe biology or chemistry or physics or computer science so they have different backgrounds and they can bring what they've learned into those foundational courses they can bring that into their uh, houdini uh, learning because so much of physics mathematics computer science the art side of things as well will come back in houdini eventually so it's useful to go and, and go after formal education, but it is not necessary in the sense that I think it is a cost benefit analysis, right? And time as well. If you're going to be spending, I don't know, 20, 30, $40,000, maybe more uh, per year on a formal education, then you gotta make sure you're gonna get your money's worth. So do your research about the institution that you're going to join and make sure that it is exactly what you want it to be. Uh, another thing that I would recommend once you get to sort of more intermediate advanced level, or, you know, the basics you can learn kind of sort of by yourself is go after maybe specific online training that really helps you. So there's uh, Rebel Way, there's Nomen, uh, there's maybe I think uh, what is it, FX PhD, uh, there's probably CGMA. Uh, so there's there's all of these online specific uh, courses that can teach specific things. So, you know, a master class in pyro, a master class in rigid body dynamics, uh, maybe project based advanced uh, lectures uh, so that they can really help you with that. So that is my recommendation to you. Uh, so be patient with yourself and aim to do one tutorial a day. Try to get to a finished rendered and lit result. Uh, try not to go after huge simulations initially. So stay away from flipped fluid simulations initially, stay away from rigid body dynamic, stay away from pyro. These things take a lot of time. Go after procedural modeling first. Make um, a little patch of grass, right? And then see with a bend deformer, can you just make it like wave in the wind, pretend that it's dynamic and see if you can render that. See if you can put a material on there. Put the lights and the camera in the scene and do that first and, and go from there. So uh, procedural modeling is going to be your very first step into Houdini. And then you can kind of start to build your skills. Then you can kind of go, well, instead of a bend deformer, what if I want to put a line in there, make that line with vellum bend a little bit and, and move in the wind a little bit, simulate it a little bit, and then deform your blades of grass, that kind of thing. And now you've got some simulation, some dynamics, if you want to do dynamics. Otherwise, maybe you want to download some assets um, you don't necessarily even need to make them yourself. You might want to go after some freely available assets from uh, mega scans or from another source. You know, there's, there's plenty of free um, models online that you can find if you Google them and see if you can bring them into Houdini and do some layout, copy them onto a grid, copy them onto a terrain. Maybe then height fields might be something you want to start learning about to sort of learn about erosion and those kind of things. Uh, so there's a lot out there, right? There's a lot of knowledge out there, but limit yourself first. Learn to walk before you can run, before eventually you can become, you know, a rock star Houdini artist, right? So just give yourself time. Now, if you like this uh, kind of information, you can also find a lot of information on my own Houdini channel. So there's, I've made a playlist um, on my own channel, which is uh, Fundamental CG uh, Concepts. And that's kind of where I'm trying to sort of gather things like cross product, dot product, uh, cost attributes, uh, SDFs, you know, bad volumes. These are definitely more on the, I don't know, intermediate range, I suppose, because they cover Houdini, but at the same time, they also cover uh, fundamental concepts of computer graphics. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say. If you like this, please like and subscribe. Um, I look forward to seeing how you progress on your journey. If you have other ideas for tutorials, might, might as well post them down in the comments below. I'll try to link all of the resources that I've just uh, told you about in the comments down below as well. Uh, and so again, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed it.